what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel and now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking that's you thing really quickly before i get into today's case um this is the first video i'm filming since blue had his accident where he was mauled by a neighbor's dog um i just wanted to say thank you to everybody who reached out thank you for everybody who left kind comments i responded to as many people as i could while nursing my son he is doing very well his his wound like the area is still very warm to the touch so he has been put on antibiotics for another week just to make sure there is nothing brewing aside from that he is back to his normal self very happy a little too happy okay because because I took his cone off the other night and I kid you not, it wasn't a full 60 seconds before he drug Ella Fantasia, his girlfriend, right onto my bedroom floor and gave her a solid two hours of humping and thumping okay i'm like sir i don't know if this is okay for you to be doing right after surgery but i also want you to be happy so i'm just like i don't know what to do but it has not killed him he actually had a full-on three-way he stacked bella's little boyfriend on top of his girlfriend and gave gave him a couple rounds it's been a lot going on overall he is doing great and i appreciate y'all so much and i'm working on getting the responsible neighbor to pay for these vet bills because dog surgery is not cheap now as for today's case we are discussing this guy Tatsuya Ichihashi of Japan and I'm not gonna waste no more time let's get into it now in 2006 21 year old Lindsay Hawker graduates from the University of Leeds and she decides before pursuing her master's degree to take a year off from school and go teach English in Japan for a year now in the fall she signs up with Nova at the time Japan's largest private English teaching company Nova employs people from all over the world who have the desire to come experience life in Japan be it for one year or the entirety of their career. Lindsay is from Coventry England and she is very excited about going to Japan and experiencing a culture that's so different from her own. She lands in Japan she is super excited she receives her assignment which is kind of far from where she's chosen to live. It's about a 35 minute commute but she had chosen this particular apartment because it was a lot cheaper than those that were closer to the school and she also has the opportunity to share this space with two other teachers at Nova. This also gives her a sense of community. She is sharing a space with two people who are essentially doing the same thing that she is doing. The three of them get along very well. They quickly form a friendship, which is also very comforting to Lindsay's loved ones because they don't have to worry about her being in this foreign place all by herself, although they still keep in regular contact with her. So far, she is off to a good start. She is building relationships, getting to know her way around the surrounding area. She she settles into her new home nicely, establishes a routine. On the days that she teaches, she takes a short bike ride to Chiba Station. And from there, she travels by train to the school. Five months in, things are going very well for her. She is loving Japan. But one evening in March of 2007, she has a very strange encounter. After getting off the train, after a long day of teaching, she goes to unlock her bike. When she is approached by this Japanese man who says to her, you are my English teacher. Now, she does not recognize recognize him as one of her students in fact she is sure she has never seen this man before he has never been a student of hers she tells him that he has her mistaken for somebody else but he is adamant that she is in fact his teacher he doubles down on her being his English teacher and again she tries to assure him that she is not his teacher because she isn't now he makes her a bit uncomfortable but she attempts to just you know keep it calm and polite she proceeds to get on her bike and begins her ride home and the man follows as Lindsay he speeds up on her bike the man picks up his pace until he is full-blown running after her asking her questions like where is she from and where does she study and despite how fast she tries to go on this bike she cannot shake this man he is fast on his feet and is able to keep up the entire way when she reaches her home her plan is to hop off the bike real fast and run inside but he approaches her while she is at the door trying to unlock it and he is asking her if she would be willing to give him lessons telling her that he is just trying to better his English and he's willing to pay her well and if she's uncomfortable they can meet in a public place and have the class. Lindsay tells him that with her schedule she really doesn't have the time to give him lessons still trying to be polite and let him know like I'm just not interested I, I couldn't make it work if I wanted to. Now finally the man has seemingly accepted this is her answer but he tells her before he leaves he would like a glass of water. He's very thirsty from chasing her down on our bike ride. Now with relief 
reluctance she says yes and she lets him in and Lindsay decides to let him in for two reasons one she knows that her roommates are there and she wants them to see his face just in case something happens just in case he follows her home and pulls some other stunt and she also wants him to know that she does not live alone and that if he comes back or if he comes in here with some foolishness it's gonna be a three-on-one situation now they're inside of the home while he's having his water he again asks Lindsay for English lessons and offers her 3,500 yen an hour which is about $33 an hour USD and this number piques Lindsay's interest because that's a generous amount of money especially for what seems to be relatively easy work work that she's already doing the man reassures her that all he wants is to better his English so he can subsequently better his quality of life he explains to her that he'd have much more opportunities if his English was better and he would really appreciate if she would just help him out and when he tells her that he knows of this great small cafe not far from her that they could meet up every day and have their session she decides you know what why not right it's a public place I should be fine and she accepts then the two of them make plans for their first session he thanks Lindsay for agreeing to help him out and before he leaves takes out a piece of paper and a pen he scribbles on it for a couple of seconds well a couple of minutes before passing the paper to her it is a drawing of her with his name and number he is Tatsuya Ichihashi Tatsuya is a 28 year old Japanese man from a nearby city but now living in Chiba where where Lindsay lives. He was born January 5th of 1979 to a very well-respected, well-to-do family. His father is a doctor and his mother is a dentist. Initially, he had dreams of following in his father's footsteps, becoming a doctor himself, but he ended up earning a degree in horticulture and had graduated from the University of Chiba. But since his graduation in 2005, he has not really done anything with his degree or career. He has not worked at all, nor has he made any effort to find work. He instead lived gives off an allowance from his parents of 100,000 yen a month. Now, it is rumored that despite him being funded by his parents, Tatuya had robbed and assaulted a man, but the case was settled out of court and his parents had paid the man off. They did not want their son to have a criminal record, nor did they want to bring any shame to the family. For the most part, he's a loner that spends the bulk of his time in a local gym. He cycles for hours at a time. His physical fitness seems to be what is the most important to him, which is why he was able to keep up with, with Lindsay like he was on foot. A couple of days after meeting, Saturday, March 24th, Lindsay and Tatsuya meet for their first lesson in a local coffee shop. Here they are grabbing a drink before they get seated and settled in. They're in line, they engage in, you know, small talk so it's not so awkward. And in the security cam footage here, you can see, well, it appears to me that Lindsay is uncomfortable. It's the way that she is playing in her hair constantly and then when he goes to start to turn toward her she takes a step back. Nevertheless the two of them get their drinks and they sit down. This first session lasts a little bit over an hour before they decide to wrap it up. The session had gone well nothing out of the ordinary really takes place but at the end of the session Tatsuya realizes that he has left his wallet at home and it is of course now time to pay Lindsay. He apologizes to her and invites her over to his apartment to collect the money that she is owed. He tells her that it's not far from the cafe so it won't be too inconvenient. Lindsay agrees and the two of them take a taxi back to his place. Before she gets out she tells the driver that she is just going upstairs really quick. She'll only be a couple of minutes and asks for him to wait for her while they get the money so he can just quickly take her back where he picked her up but after some time goes by and Lindsay does not return to the car the taxi driver decides to leave he figures that maybe she had changed her mind and forgotten to let him know that she was staying so he takes another ride and goes on about his business hours go by without anybody hearing anything from Lindsay and when she does not return home that evening her roommates become very worried especially not being able to contact her so they go to the police but the police kind of brush them off Monday morning when Lindsay 
Lindsay does not show up to teach and the school is unable to reach her, they contact her parents and then they contact the police again. And at this point, they begin searching for her starting at her apartment. They question her roommates who tell them again of the strange man who had followed her home and who she had also agreed to meet for English lessons at a cafe. They also hand over this really strange, creepy sketch that he made of her that has his information on it. That evening, when police arrive to his apartment, no one answers the door. The neighbor's balcony faces his, so they will have visibility into his window if it's open, right? They allow the police to come into their unit and get on the balcony to see if they can see something. And they do. Even though the lights are off inside of Tatsuya's apartment, they can see a shadowy figure moving around in there, so they know he's in there. They assume that he still has Lindsay in there and he's holding her hostage, so they call for backup. And another something that they notice that's very strange is the fact that his bathtub has been moved to the patio. Now it takes a while, but eventually more officers do show up and they start to plan their raid. Like they are fully prepared to run inside of this man's apartment and rescue Lindsay and of course take him down to jail. But just as they are prepared to bust his door down and go in, the door swings open and Tatsuya runs out. He is barefoot and he gets right past them. He's also wearing a backpack, which one of the officers manages to grab, but he still manages to get past them, all nine of them. The man takes off into the night with no shoes on. And y'all, now that he is out of there, they proceed with the search of his apartment, of course, looking for Lindsay, but the apartment is dead silent. There is no sign of her. There are a few of her things there and several women's wigs, scattered about the place and they figure that if he took off on foot there must be something there to find then they think about the odd placement of that bathtub that has been moved to his outside patio they go out there to see that it has been filled with this sand and soil mixture there are flower seeds freshly planted as if he is about to use this bathtub as a flower bed but underneath the soil and the flower seeds are the naked remains of Lindsay. They instantly issue a warrant for his arrest. They begin distributing posters around with his face plastered all over him. His face is on all of the news outlets multiple times a day. Some of the images of him that they put out even have little wigs photoshopped on him just in case he is out here or has been seen out here with a wig on and somebody will recognize that version of him. There are even life-size cardboard cutouts of him placed in different shops but they get no viable hits none of their tips check out they can't find this man anywhere and over time the case begins to go cold but Lindsay's parents are not trying to have that two months into her disappearance they travel to Japan to be closer to the case feeling like the police have not really been prioritizing their daughter's case and with the help of the media they're able to highlight a lot of the police's incompetence how they had not taken the roommate seriously when they first reported her missing not not to mention Tatsuya managing to run past nine police officers who were preparing to run in. Now it is also said that the police waited an entire month to question witnesses and the images that first circulated of him were seven years old. They weren't even current. Meanwhile Tatsuya is on the loose traveling from Omori to Okinawa and all up and through without being recognized. Sometimes he goes and stays in this abandoned bunker down in Okinawa on uh, one of the remote islands for a while surviving off of fish and other wildlife that he catches but he never stays in one place for too long because he's always afraid that someone will recognize him he tours the temples in the southwestern island of shikoku wishing that Lindsay could come back to life he had apparently read a novel where the dead are resurrected after someone goes on this same trail of temples while thinking of them so he tried to do that for Lindsay. everywhere he goes he is very careful to avoid security cameras and face-to-face -face human interaction he makes no attempt to contact anybody that he known personally none of his family none of his friends as far as he knows one of them might turn him in he is not willing to risk it from 2008 to 2009 he resides in Osaka which is only 250 miles west of Tokyo he sleeps in internet cafes and works on different construction sites being paid underneath the table and not only as a means of supporting himself and feeding himself, this man wants plastic surgery to lessen his chances of being 
recognized and turned in. Now, in the meantime, though, he makes a few tweaks to himself to lessen his chances of being recognized. He removes part of his lower lip to make it appear thinner, which he does in a public restroom. The man wears several layers of surgical masks to hide the scars and also help hide some of his face. And wearing multiple masks, he didn't really stand out or look crazy during this time either because in the springtime, this was pretty normal to do to avoid the pollen. So these double, sometimes triple masks along with a baseball cap makes it fairly easy for him to fly under the radar. While out one day, he sees himself on a wanted poster and decides to go and remove the moles from his face because he felt like that is what really stuck out to him in the picture. But all of these tweaks he's done on himself are not enough for him to feel comfortable. The man is living in a constant state of paranoia and rightfully so, he don't deserve peace. He finally manages to save up enough money for a professional procedure. He has the bridge of his nose altered as well as his eyelids to have a more Western look. Actually, Jai, you look like you didn't took yourself from Japanese to Mexican. If I'm being honest. And because the police are still not getting anywhere and Lindsay's family is still applying pressure, they raised the award amount to 10 million yen. They also put out more recent photos of him, photos of him inside of his apartment building taken from security footage. And unfortunately, they still don't get any viable leads, at least not right away. Several months later in October of 2009, they receive a call from a plastic surgeon who's seen a wanted post with Tatsuya's face on it and believes that this man is one of his recent patients. When he sends over the photos to police, he is actually right and it is confirmed that this is their guy. His before and after photos are released to the public and they receive another hit, another tip from a construction worker who believes he works with Tatsuya. But before they can follow up on this lead, Tatsuya sees his face, his before and after photos being plastered all over the news and decides it is time to skip town. Now he later says that when he saw his before and after pictures on the news, he was in shock. His heart began to race. He couldn't do anything but stand there and stare at it, trembling. He knows that he cannot waste any time. He has to get out of there. He boards a ferry in Osaka and does his absolute best to keep a low profile, but a staff member of the ferry recognizes him and very discreetly lets security know that they need to call the police. When the officers board the ferry and approach him asking his name, he already knows, like, this is it. The jig is up. He replies, Yes, it's me, Tatsuya Ichihashi. He is finally arrested after two and a half years on the run. And initially, they only charge him with abandoning a body because they don't know what has happened prior to that. Once the full story is told as to what happened on that day, he receives the additional charges for murder and SA. Tatsuya admits that he always had sinister plans for Lindsay, that he had lured her to his apartment that day to sa her instead of paying her like he had promised to do that is what he proceeded to do to her but she would not stop screaming and i mean look at him out of fear that his neighbors would hear her and call the police he begins to choke her but he maintains that he did not intend for her to die that he was simply just trying to stop her from screaming now after he realized that she was no longer alive he for whatever reason shaved all of her hair off then put her in the tub he added a decoration comp solution to the soil that would hopefully mask the smell of her and then of course planted the seeds on top in a perfect world for him it would just look like a flower bed and nobody would notice anything now his trial begins and it's pretty straightforward with him confessing to everything many people were in favor of him receiving the death penalty but instead he receives life in prison with the chance to parole after serving 10 years just 10 and he has the audacity to appeal his sentencing, claiming that it was unfair. His legal team argued that he had been sentenced too harshly for a mistake. The court, however, does not agree with him and decides to uphold his original sentence. Now, if you think he just took his little sentence and sat down, child, no, not without some mess. He goes on to write a book about his time on the run titled Until the Arrest. And in the book, he does offer an apology to Lindsay's family. His book is actually very popular popular over in Britain and sells over a hundred thousand copies. He offers Lindsay's parents the money 
from the book, but they refuse and actually find that to be quite insulting. And because of the success of the book, a movie was made in 2022 titled I Am Ichihashi, The Journal of a Killer. Now, I didn't see anything like any statements or thoughts expressed by his parents after his arrest, but what I found interesting is the fact that he deposited at the time he entered prison 100,000 yen and has been using that for commissary. And I wonder if that was like his last month of his allowance or if his parents gave that to him and what their position has been on this whole thing. After 10 years, he was not granted parole. His request was denied. On average, inmates at the time served 32 years of a life sentence before they were actually granted parole. So if he is 48 now and he been in there for 13, he should have a good 19 more before he is paroled at what, 67? If my math is correct, that's still too young. Keep him in there. He don't deserve. That is pretty much it for this case. Let me know your thoughts down below if you've heard it before, what you think about it. The fact that this man did surgery on himself is just sick. Anywho, let me know your thoughts down below. Like the video, subscribe if you have not. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Hey, Bella. Hey, girl. Oh, my eyeball. So she has these two roommates in the house who have blah, 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 blah. He doubles down. Blah. He doubles. He is it one S on the double? He doubles down. Yes. No. Did I say one S? Child, I'm losing it. Becoming a doctor. His physical fitness is seemingly the most important thing to him. Did I say all of important? Here they are ordering a drink before they get seedled. Seedled. I was about to say seedled. Trying to say seated and settled in. And in the and in the security cam footage. But um, right. Okay. His news is on all his news. His face is on all the news. Pull yourself together. Feeling like the jip 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 Mm-hmm. Feeling like the jip. I was gonna do it again. Not the Japan's police. Japanese police. JPD. Prioritizing her daughter's disappearance. It's not a disappearance. Child Blue is in there snoring like crazy.